is there a silver lining in a tragic circumstances? Maybe there is. It was 9.10 in the evening. Two weeks before my graduation from Damascus University School of Medicine, when I received a phone call to inform me that my older brother was shot and killed by the Syrian regime forces. Unfortunately, this sort of tragedy where many families in Syria experiencing. My small town called Madaya was under siege, a suffocating siege by the Syrian regime. Once I entered the town, I'll be stuck inside and my faith will be unknown like the rest of the population over there. Most of the population were hiding in basement. Electricity, running water, food, medication were completely getting depleted in that town. With some hesitation, I went to town to stand with my family. Upon arrival, with tearful eyes, my mom said, how come you didn't arrive earlier to save your brother before he bled to death. There was no room to grieve, as bombs were raining on the town almost daily. The snipers around the town on the hills were shooting anyone walks the streets. Well, I'm right here now. The first thought came to my mind is to hide in a basement, like the rest. But my heart was saying, no, do what you dedicated your life to do. You went to medical school to save others. My colleagues in medical school, an anesthesia technician, technician, not a doctor in Syria, and me, myself, the medical student, were the only medical staff left in town, the siege town. We established a field hospital, a small field hospital in a basement. It was a basement. We started from scratch. We painted the walls. We answered the duty with whatever furniture and equipment we can find at that time. Also, we paid like a group of smugglers to smuggle in some second-hand equipment for the hospital. Our hospital was rudimentary. As you can see, in this operation room, this operation room saved hundreds of lives. It's very basic, very basic as you can see. Also, we utilized SUV Mitsubishi car as an ambulance to reach out the bombed sites. When I'm saying bombed sites, I mean this. This is a bombed sites after a barrel bomb hits. We had to drive and pick the wounded people in total darkness, as the snipers were very quick, very quick, to shoot any light they see. When we were established in the, ho the field hospital, we faced the fact that we need a blood bank for the hospital. But we don't have the proper equipment to save the blood. So we need an idea. I came up with a simple idea to perform a transmitted disease test, like the HIV and hepatitis, on 30 to 40 people of different blood types to ensure that we have the blood we need, the necessary blood we need with the donors. The town was under siege, so we guaranteed 100% will find the donors. Just to remind you, my colleagues in the medical school and me were just medical students. And we had to deal with any procedure had come to our basement. Many times, Fear and the frustrations would build up and take over. In those moments, 
given up the hope would like would come up to our minds but when saying kids under surgeries with expired anesthetics suffering in hunger withstand the pain with little to no medicine like this girl would be in motivated and those kids give us the motivation to continue what we start so one night and i can't forget this night a severe wound the patient was rushed into our basement and a sniper's bullet rushed in with him luckily the the bullets drilled the door's frame that bullet brought a million of thoughts to our minds it was one of the most difficult situation we faced as we have to procedure a major operation on that patient under extreme pressure and stress we keep one eye on the oxygen tank so it will not run up on us and the other eye on the heart monitor my ears were occupied with two sounds the first sound the first sound coming from the sniper's bullets hitting the wall and the other sound coming from the old electrical generator that we, we have been using it we stared at each other doubting can we save this patient with the basic equipment we had yes we did it and the patient was saved however the bullet that night was a clear message that our hospital was identified by Syrian regime and now it's matter of days our hospital will becomes another regime destruction site i'm not ready to leave my home i'm not ready to leave people who need medical care behind me but with the compromised hospital and my mom leaving with the idea of losing another son i had to start consider leaving the town it was one of the most difficult decision i have ever made i skipped the town with my family to turkey in turkey i got married to my beautiful wife lubna shortly after the marriage we came to united states to complete my medical degree and finish my final exams only to find that the system in the us is different than syria where the medical school it's just 6 years after the high school i found myself in difficult or uncalculated position with two families to support my mom and siblings back in turkey and my own family in united states now i had to start the medical school from scratch again i had to support my family's pharmacy education I had to finance two cars. I had to pay for two easy passes with added bonus a baby girl on the way. The bottom line is I had to work twice as hard as anyone else. To most this situation is very complicated or like almost impossible, but to me I know I can do it. comparing like what i witness in syria <coughs> studying countless hours working 50 to 60 hours as an uber driver you could call me sometime who know <laughs> um preparing for the mcat doing research at boston college um shoveling snow in boston area and raising a baby is doable compared with what i saw in syria 
Back to our question. Is there a silver lining in tragic circumstances? Yes, there are two. One, we have found ingenuity and innovation in ourselves. We never thought they are existed. It's true, and I agree, the war brought death and destruction. But at the same time, it brought strength, courage, and unity of the community. People over there were donating blood. People were saving each other. People were sharing the plate of food daily. Believe me, daily. Second, the war in Syria examined our humanity. And it threw questions at our society that have never been answered. Do we withstand the harshness of life? Do we sacrifice ourselves to save others? Should I be the hero or should she? Or he, who was the hero, the victim or the savior? You dig deep in your soul in these circumstances. The war showed me to help others. You don't need to wait the perfect timing, nor you need to have the perfect skills and strength. Just step up and help in whatever you can. Your help doesn't have to be heroic. Help whatever you can. Sometimes providing water, food, vaccines, medication, or it could be as simple as providing love and support to mom standing in front of her child's grave, like my mom. It's enough. Thank you. <laughs>